more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com. This is Dark Cybernetics Data Structures Arrays. Follow along with our free course documentation. In this video and those after it, we will talk about what we call, referred to really as a linear data structure or a homogeneous data structure, the array in the computer system when we think about storing information we think about the information being different or suppose those these information pieces are the same we could group them by their type and this type we use is referred to as array well when this was a one-dimensional array and we suppose we had an integer and we define the type right here this is the type type and we know that for an array using a program like so this was the C language or C++ we have array and we have to, to denote the size of the array we have to put the put it in the blocks here when we define an array we have to specify the size and in some languages we can specify the length on different machines um, the array itself has, takes some different amounts of memory and here in C++ or some other language we just have to put if it was a character data like A or B and since it's 0 to H, you know that array is from 0 to n minus 1, right? We can it would end it, of course, H, and we would put H here, those are the, no dot, dot, dot there in the center. And then we have to put the semicolon thing here, the terminating statement, right? But on a computer system, we have to think about it a different way, where each individual indice, well, numeric value here, um, or there's each element on the computer uh, take on different values and different meanings different systems so when we think about using arrays every data structure is not the same here um, these are called the indexes or, ind or indices and these are just indice va index values this gives us a numerical value we need to use for our program or some type of um, structuring right we have these are index values right and the, each individual block is referred to as an element and there's also uh, a memory association uh, for each element inside of an array when we think about using arrays in our computer system there are several type of structures we need to keep in mind when we use elements or using index values and arrays um, there are also other systems in place we can of course think about the certain terms we take advantage of when we use elements and array systems um, the uh, total right let's write it in here total element the total number of elements is what we call the length and we can use the length operator in many languages to return the length and for using arrays in many programming languages also there's other information that we may need when we um, traverse or copy or sort arrays using what we call an array there are different things we need to know that arrays start at zero and right we write it down here arrays start at zero and they start, you go from zero to n minus one right that's important information we need to know about arrays right so we have a total we've learned that the index the index values, there are elements, the total length of the elements uh, is what we call a length, and we know that arrays start from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. And we've also learned that the arrays are generally collections of items that are the same type. So if we had A, B, C, D, E, F, um, G, and H. There's also what we call it, there's a memory address associated with each one of these elements. 
and depending on the type of memory or the type of uh, variable we hold or is, is based on the size of the amount of information we store uh, on the computer for each data structure, each data type, the memory address, uh, it can, we can use a pointer to access the memory address or the memory address can be static or dynamic depending on the type of array we use. In this case we're using a one-dimensional array. Suppose this first one was um, some hex value or what have you to um, well, well defined suppose this was a, we're using a fixed or a size array, but suppose we're using a dynamic array, the structuring would be a bit different. Okay, let's move on to some other concepts we think about when we use arrays. There are a host of different features and characteristics we can think about when we talk about using abstract data types. When we have an array, there are a variety of different um, structurings and different types of arrays we can think about when we use um, well arrays types. So let's define an array. An array is a collection right give a formal definition for the array. There's some problems with this drawing device today. We can say it's a collection of items, right? We can see uh, items could be lists, or item could be it could be a collection of items often of the same right type. Right? Give you items of the same type. And these items are stored contiguously. And the stored, I mean, let's say let's draw the, the array. They draw contiguously, continuously into memory. So we have an array here. They're stored somewhere. It's a collection of them. They're all the same type. And there's the array, the definition. We underline it. And sequential. Well, in sequence, and if we store it in sequence, you know they are one after the other. When we think about using arrays, we need to know that when we use arrays, there are other problems we come about when we traverse the information or when we search the information. When the information is contiguous or continuous, there um, is no way to determine that the where there is a, a hole. Suppose we had a part of the array that had a um, uh, suppose we need to search for an element. If we search for an element and there was a, a information that, that information returned null in memory or the, the, the information was not there. We would have to take a worst case we talk about we haven't really gotten got into this particular area of talking about complexity. When we have information and in, in, we have to search for information it may take is the length of the array when it's in, in a long fashion. If to look, you know, if we were searching for houses in a neighborhood and we went down the street, and, or this was a phone number and we did not know the area code, we'd have to search until we got to the number we desired. It could take, at worst case, the length of the array, which is a problem if we had to write a program. And so, there's other information we need to know about arrays. There are different types of arrays. Um, there um, there's different types of information. The information we store in an array is generally primitive and when we say that the information is primitive well, we can you know maybe spell wrong there we can fix that but we can go back we can go about fixing that you know we just say it's primitive we are, we are talking about the different types of information that can be stored in the array it, it could be what integer values say int here or it could be boolean values a lot of languages they use the word bool we could be floating point values like your um, like area or some kind of angle or it could be some type of string data or character data for an array okay 
or it could be character data, like an individual letter, which is a, a char. And these all, of course, take different size bytes on the computer. All right? You know that integer, and they, they'd be eight bytes, and a, a boolean is one of false, true or false, one or zero. And again, the array is a collection of items stored on um, the same type in contiguous fashion in memory. That's easy to understand, right? So let's look at some other concepts for the array. Some very, very useful information when you think about using arrays and we have a, some type of information. What type of, let's say, operations operations there's some problem with this drawing tool today not sure what the issue is but we can get around that so we're talking there are different types of operations we can do for arrays and all arrays I mean there are different types of data structures and different data structures have different type of operations for arrays um, and, um, what we can do for an array we can insert a value and we can say that inserting is well, of course, inserting is putting an item in a different place. So we can say that inserting is adding to the array. Adding an element to the array, right? And then usually adding refers to putting at the first part of the of the, the, the array. Add an, we can also delete from the array. And deleting is, of course, removing. Removing an element. Let's fix the M here, removing an element from the array. Okay. And we can also traverse the array. And traversing um, the array means we, we will print out all the values inside the array. We have limited space here, so you know, we have to. We could go over that later, but we know, right now we know printing out all the elements in the array is what we call traversing an array. There's also other features we can do with arrays. We can insert, we can delete, and traverse. We can also search the array. And each one of these operations, a lot of times they take constant time. But some, you know, like searching, it does take the length of the array to find an element in the array. A lot of times, at worst case. As we, we people are really more concerned about the average case and the worst case scenario, the best case would be like constant time where we found the first item in the array. But if it was, you know, the phone number or a birth certificate ID or I'm not sure where this line came from. But anyway, we need to find we, we refer to it as index and we find index of an element, and we'd also update if we had a database of information we wanted to replace all the values on in the array which could take as much as n time right we want to we want to replace elements right all well, all the specific elements I mean, sometimes you may not need to update all the elements just a few of the elements that's something we can do inside an array and these last few um, features that we can do in an array they have similar features but we, we're running out of space here we can of course copy in the array right here we can copy we can also um, duplicate or, or we can clone items and that's the last one we can do here we can append and append if you append something in concatenation it's um, putting in items at the end of the list so we can just say end here okay so our operations we can do for arrays, we can insert, we can delete, we can traverse, we can search, we can update, we can copy, clone, and append for arrays. And many of these features um, take a similar amount of time. We can insert, here's the definition, we can delete, we can traverse, we can search, we can update, we can copy, we can clone, we can append. That's placing items at the end. Okay. All right. So let's move on to something else for arrays. What other features do we need to know about when we think about using arrays? Um, the array data structure has very different types. Well, 
let's need another R here. The array have different type. There are different types of arrays. That's the best way to talk about this. Let's go over some different types of arrays. Just the words today, and we will go into um, the other features because there are so many different types of arrays. We we have a fixed size. We have some. I'm not sure what the area is today, but we have a fixed size for an array. Uh, we know we have the, we know the the lengths already defined. Suppose the length was five, and so it's and we, it's not a dynamic array. If we wanted to make the the, the array resizable, it would be called dynamic. Okay, it's supposed to be an M there. It's dynamic. So, and there are other types of arrays that they can be fixed, that they can be dynamic. Well, some programming languages allow you to do that. Not all languages have the same. But we also be aware that not all languages are the same, and that and the data structure does not work for each type. So what we're talking about at first, we're used to talking about a one-dimensional array. I'm just saying one D, one-dimensional array where we had items and we can only go in one direction. Um, there's also a, a multi-dimensional array where we have suppose it was row and column. Um, that's supposed to be multi-dimensional, running out of space in here. Okay, or 1D or 2D. It's a two-dimensional array. We have row by column. There are also things like associative arrays. This is a fixed size here. This is a resizable. It's a resizing. That uh, this S and the Z look alike. Fix that later. All right. Okay. Let's go down here. And let's put just put the other one, the other term here on this side. So we're talking about different array types. We have a fixed, a dynamic. We have a multi-dimensional array. There's also what we call Judy arrays. And Judy arrays. Okay. And there are also what we say associative arrays. Associative array. Associative arrays. Okay. And there are also what we call what's this supposed to be parallel arrays. Parallel arrays. And we have parallel arrays, Judy arrays, associative arrays, and there are also row, major, column, um, row, column. And it, we think about row, major, column, when we think about using, doing three-dimensional operations with matrix operations for arrays. If you want to do things in data structures or if you're doing things with computer graphics, there are other different types of arrays and the way you access those array values are a bit different. Know that not all data structures have the same features and, uh, and not all the same performance. So, picking the proper data structure for arrays is, is very rare and important when we solve problems using the computer system. So, we have an array, we have a fixed, dynamic, we have one dimensional, multi dimensional, and the Judy arrays, associative arrays, parallel arrays, and row column major order. Okay, let's go on to another topic that may be a bit important for talking about arrays and data structure. Okay. Let's see. There are what we refer to as what does this thing say? A linear. An array is linear, right? We know the layers is what goes one direction and we there are linear types. There are lists, and there are also sets. Right, these are linear types, and there are tuples, or tuplets, and there are queues, and there are stacks. Right, so there's lists, sets, tuples, queues, stacks, and heaps. 
these are our linear types of data structures. All right. If you're not familiar with the with lists, sets, tuples, queues, stacks, and heaps, we'll go over those later. We're going to go over, we'll go over the arrays first because they are probably the most easy to understand. Some of these are similar to a list, to um, the array structure, but you know we, we need to think about that because heaps, you know, we took the larger elements at the top, and there's stacks, and it's first in, first out. We think about stacks and queues, and tuples and lists. Yeah. All right. So what are we concerned about when we refer to arrays in this particular fashion? We need to be concerned about the what are we put in here. Hmm. Let's see. Well, we're we are still talking about arrays, but we have to go into some other features that are a bit more important. So we have uh, like something like if we were storing information in the computer, we had something like let's suppose there was something like milk, right? M I L K, and we put M I L K into memory. So we subsectioned each one of the memory um, for the index values. This is this was almost zero. It's supposed to be zero, and we went from zero one. Um, this was zero, right? And two, and this is three, three, which is actually two, and this is and so it's n zero to n minus one. We store that in memory somewhere. We need to talk about the types of operations we can do using the array, and how much time it take to access this information. Um, the first thing we think about, which which is really important, and I, I draw this diagram this way, where if we read a single individual and we knew where the information was, um, it, it takes a certain amount of time. And there are other features that really have a similar amount of time, like insert. All right, this is the best way to think about these things: insert, insertion, and deletion. It's because we're using the array feature. We if this was the information was blind, if we did a blind search. The best way to think about this when we use this, if we insert it, delete it, or search the array. Um, these operations. Let's, let's talk about the average case and the worst case. For example, for these linear data structures, or the array is you know one of the prime examples of uh, for searching. These um, let's say average down here at the bottom. This is supposed to be average, right? And this other box here is. Um, worst case, right? We can read, insert, and search and delete. And a lot of these operations take the length of the array on average, right? So we still don't know what it is. And the length and the average and the worst case performance for searching the array is the same, but for reading for a known position, a lot of times it is constant time. The worst and average case, we know is for the known for, for a known position. So that's really the, the difference between using an array. You know, they don't work for all problems but you know this really the, the way to think about the array um, the access time and read times insertion and other things take almost always in time so what are the advantages of using the array we know that when we use array um, well there we have okay advantages all right we're running out of space here we have to fix this uh, we may have to erase some of this or delete when you think about erasing and deleting things on the computer, well, the worst thing we can do here is um, is we have a fast lookup time, which is an advantage over the array for a known position. So let's abbreviate this, right? We can we have fast, right? Well, I'm not sure what's wrong there. Fast lookup time. For the array data structure, it's the array lookup time is fast. If we know the position, and which is you know which is okay if it's a short array or a small amount we, um, of information. Um, there's some drawbacks for using the arrays that um, where time is, it takes time to of course search right. We know that if the lookup time was fast, but it took we had to use time to search the array. And some certain algorithms we use would take in log in time for searching the array. And it was the disadvantage you know, that search time is since search time is a problem. 
Um, the worst case could be in. Right? If we search the array and um, we had to know that it took time to search the array for this homogeneous data structure. It took time for us to find the information we were looking for. So what would we put here, right? Where we write as a disadvantage. If we knew that it took time to look as fast searching, but it may take the length of the end, we're going to say that the disadvantage is that it's the performance of it is worst case. at worst case performance for a search using this linear data structure. So we talked about linear um, data structures and for more information please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com.